Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of the enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to, the, to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message is sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Oh. 
reading from the book of Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ was, has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For us all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God, to the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. And she said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. <laughs> I speak to the name of the risen Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
and and now we can now we can say it right for all of Lent, my my sons we do we do nighttime prayers and we started singing that we started singing that hymn that um irma uh, that Irma did for the um, lift every voice and sing, you know, um, oh, what a beautiful city. Oh, what a beautiful city. Oh, what a beautiful city. 12 gates to the city. Alleluia. Except for I changed it to of the Lord because my kids wanted to sing it, but I was like, it's Lent, you guys. <laughs> to which every time they said, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> they just laughed at me. <laughs> you can't stop Easter joy. Amen. You cannot stop Easter joy. That's what Hallelujah is about. It's about just as, it, it's you know that word. It kind of, it doesn't really even mean anything. You know that if you were to translate that from Hebrew, you, it would just translate as Hallelujah. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. It's just a sound of joy. I mean, the yah part, it means God, right? And so it's just this kind of like praise to God. But it's really just a sound that has God at the end of it. Like, let's just make this sound that is the most joyful thing that we can do and let's dedicate it to God and, and just let the joy come out of us. Let it burst out. And so what I want to say to you today is that I'm moved to preach to you about being surprised by joy. Being surprised by by joy. That is what we are called to do as Christian people, to be surprised by joy. On Friday, I began this holy, um, this holy week, I began to tell the story of my last 24 hours as a chaplain at a hospital in Washington, D.C. And I told our gathering of being woken up in the middle of the night and going down to the emergency department to a small family room that separated from the main waiting area where families are gathered so they can be told privately about what's happening with their beloved. I told the story of a young black army officer and his one-year-old daughter whom I met that dark summer morning in the family room of the emergency department. I spoke of the loss of the young black mother, his wife who had died unexpectedly while he was at work. I talked about the hours that we spent in that little room trying to conceive of what could life be like after a shattering event with such finality. I spoke also about how outside the door of our little cocoon, this little place where we were experiencing grief and loss, about how the rest of the city, the rest of the hospital even, were going about their business, not noticing that there was a life-shifting, life-altering thing happening in this tiny little room. Good Friday is a day like that for us. It was a day that for the disciples who disappear from the narrative as Jesus's story is being unfolded after he's arrested. You know, I asked the question, we know what happened to Peter. We know what happened to Judas. We know what happened to the women who showed up at the cross. But what about the rest of the disciples? Where were they? The gospel doesn't tell us. For them, it was just a normal day, maybe. They were just wondering if Je when Jesus was going to get out of jail. You know, Friday, Good Friday is a day where we observe the world-changing reality of Jesus' crucifixion as the rest of the world goes on as if nothing's happening. And, and I said, grief and loss are almost always like this when we experience them. It's something that we go through as individuals, and it seems like the rest of the world doesn't even notice. As Christians, it's not an obligation, but it is a privilege to be the ones invited into the family room of the emergency department to grieve the death of Jesus as the rest of the world goes on like normal. It's a privilege because in that room, we acknowledge some of the deepest questions of the human experience. We are given the opportunity to feel one of the most universal experiences of human life and to ask its most fundamental questions. Unlike the busy and normal world, we stop to acknowledge the fullness of life, even if that fullness means grief and loss. We stop to wonder if grief and loss will have the final say. Good Friday allows us to stop and ask this simple question, a question that no matter how much we try to avoid it in our normal lives, it eventually touches us, it eventually comes to our lips and it comes out of our hearts. We wonder, is this the end of the story or is there more? And the answer to that question is Easter day. 
The answer to the question of all our griefs and our losses is Easter Day, and it is to be surprised by joy. Easter Day is the day where God says, as Paul Harvey used to say, the storyteller on radio, and now for the rest of the story. Easter reminds us that even in the midst of things that seem final, we are surrounded by things that are eternal. As the hours of our vigil watch on that summer morning in Washington, D.C. flowed along as that little baby girl fell asleep in her father's arms in the family room of the emergency department, we knew that we could not stay in that cocoon of grief forever. We knew that our world could not stop there, that the rest of the world would keep on going and that we also had to keep on going. We opened the door and we rolled it away like a stone that was too heavy for humans to bear. And we walked outside and do you know what we found? We found that the sun was rising. The sun was rising. We had spent the entire night, several hours in that little cocoon. And when we came out, we found out that even after a long night, the sun always rises. It always brings hope, hope for a new day, for new possibilities, and yes, for new joys. It is now three years since the last time we celebrated Easter in person, years where we wondered how long would we be apart, years where we may have wondered, is this the end of the story? How glorious it is to find that just like the sun that comes up every morning, just like Jesus rising on the third day, here we are three years later gathered together. You know, under normal circumstances, I think we love Easter. We love the celebrations. We love family being together. We love to say alleluia. But I think in the last couple of years, we haven't just loved Easter as a fun and joyous celebration. We've needed Easter. We've needed a fresh reminder in the midst of the turbulence of the world that life is stronger than death. We've needed a reminder that God cannot be conquered, that God is in control and that we are connected to the eternal plan of salvation. We've needed a reminder that the sun always rises and that we are Easter people. We are not obligated to be here, we are not obligated to hold out hope against all odds, but we are privileged to be invited to see what God is doing and to be surprised by the foolishness of joy in the midst of calamity. This is what it means to be Easter people. You know, walking out of that emergency department nine years ago, that young army soldier and I were struck by the beauty of sunrise. We were surprised by the small mercy of life's persistence and the sound of birds. We both stood there taking it all in. And you know what? It felt like we were breathing again. With his little girl sleeping in his arms, he and I hugged each other and we stood a little closer to that certain hope that life is continually changed, but it is not ended. I closed this morning with a poem by the poet Malcolm Geit. It's about the women who came to the empty tomb. It's his 15th sonnet for Easter. He says, he blesses every love which weeps and grieves. And now he blesses hers who stood and wept and would not be consoled or leave her love's last touching place. But watched as low light crept up from the east, a sound behind her stirs, a scatter of bright bird song through the air. She turns but cannot focus through her tears or recognize the gardener standing there. She hardly hears his gentle question, why? Why are you weeping? Or sees the play of light that brightens as she chokes out her reply. They took away my love, my day is night. And then she hears her name. She hears love say the word that turns her night and ours today. My prayer for you is that you would feel the fullness of Easter, that you would know how much you need it this year, that you would notice sunrise after a dark night, and that you would allow yourself to be surprised by joy, no matter how small. For where you find joy, you will find Jesus, the risen Lord, welling up inside you and bringing you peace and the assurance of a living and eternal love that never dies. 
。阿门。Recognition that through baptism we are born into eternal life. Let us renew our baptismal covenant responsively. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Please join me in reading the prayers of the people from six found on page five of the inserts and on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. Those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Wayne, our bishop, and Wendell and Nida, assistant bishops, and all bishops and other ministers, especially Christopher and Anne. For all who serve God and church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For Donald Washington. Pray for the family of Michael Hicks. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For Carter Murray Staples. For our love to you. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died. 
that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For Stephen and Rosetta, especially for Rosetta Hall's family. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may be May Christ strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Alleluia. Peace of the Lord. Hallelujah. Peace to the Lord with everyone. Peace of the Lord. Hallelujah. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Like I had got Uber driving at three. Oh, that's definitely The Lord. Hi, I want to see everybody. Hi, how are you? Yes, I know. 
Now, doesn't this feel like a beautiful city? We don't have 12 gates, but we have a beautiful city. It's so, it's so wonderful to see all of your smiling faces. Even, even I can see the smiles behind some of the masks. That's beautiful. We are so glad that everybody is here for the Easter service. And um, we love the sharing and all the joyful noises. Um, it feels like life is here, doesn't it? And so we're so grateful for all of you uh, being here. And we'd love you to just keep coming. Just keep, let's just keep this joy going. Let's keep, let's keep it up. Um, come see us, come be with us. This joy is here and you can escape whatever's happening outside. And you can always find Jesus here and you can always find community here. You can always find the life of the world poured out for you in this place. And so we invite you to keep coming back, to keep being with us and to keep this Easter joy going. That's my announcement. <laughs> what could be a better announcement than he is risen? Amen. Amen. He is risen. Um, we do, I do want to acknowledge though, if we have any birthdays, then we would love to celebrate birthdays or anniversaries. I'd love to say a prayer. I've little voices have been telling me that there are at least a couple people that have birthdays. I'm gonna go ahead and get my birthday prayer too, because my birthday is next Sunday. And I'm, I'll be out of town. Right. But I'm going to let Ann do the birthday first. Well, then this week, is your birthday is this week, too. Oh, my birthday's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We got a bunch. We got, hey, listen, we're all, we're all, we've all been baptized in the precinct. Yes, we have. Of all the leaders. Yes. Who's going to pray for us? Ellie. Ellie's going to pray for us. Let us pray. Watch over our children, O oh Lord, as their days increase. Bless them, guide them, wherever they may be. Strengthen them where they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Rise them as they fall. Raise them up as they fall. And his heart may be thy peace. Which passes understanding, abiding all of their days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. And we have one anniversary blessing. For oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and the church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish one another in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. All right, blessings on all the birthdays and on the anniversary. Um, so there is one announcement, I think, or maybe. I, I have an announcement. Okay. That was my mother's service. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. Good morning, and what a joy to be here. I'm doubly moved because this coming Saturday, we'll be celebrating my mother's life. who died in October. She was Betty Wells. Many of you knew her, and you're all welcome to come. The service will be here. In the sanctuary at two o'clock, it'll be a funeral mass, and then we'll gather downstairs for stories and refreshments. As I say, we're, we're all welcome to celebrate the lives of all of us who uh, share one love greater than you can imagine. If you have questions, uh, let me know. Um, Neil will be uh, will be doing the music, and Father Jason Odin from Church of the Advent. And then Melanie wanted me to, to let you know if anybody would like to volunteer with the um, the flying pig marathon, um, please see Melanie. It's the weekend of the 30th. Is that right? Yeah. And I'm looking for three more um, time for Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, the, the, that third, the weekend of the 30th. So if you're looking for a volunteer opportunity, you want to kind of help out, it's it's not too not too labor intensive and it's it's fun time. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice. Sorry. Yes. Now we all are back together again. The fourth Sunday of every month, we have gospel. Now probably been a lot of time. Who's the forefront? We'd love to see a future face. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Oh, my God. 
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for your glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your sins into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing.
are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ. Amen. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. May the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is risen today. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Goodbye, everyone. Have a happy Easter. Take care. Bye-bye.